right now, though, Steve, we're going to take you to Ottawa. Federal ministers Stop responding on. to the Peace Act strike. Let's listen live. Frank, check. Numerous PSAC demands are unrealistic and some would have grave repercussions on our capacity to provide services to Canadians. We have to see to it that agreements be reasonable for taxpayers and respect our objectives, which is to serve Canadians. That is still our objective. I am convinced that we will be able to reach an agreement. They see employees a wage increase of 9% over three years. This fully matches the increase recommended by the Public Interest Commission. And all members of the Commission endorse that increase, including the PSAC's nominee. We have also put forward proposals on a number of other priorities uh, for the PSAC, including remote work, increased shift and weekend premiums, and improved leave with pay for family-related responsibilities. We have no doubt that there is enough common ground to compromise and reach an agreement with the PSAC, and I'm convinced by working together, we can do so. To all federal public servants across the country who work hard every day, your work is valued by Canadians and by us. We will continue to work with the PSAC to reach agreements that are fair and competitive, but we cannot do that unless the union is prepared to compromise. We cannot write a blank check. To Canadians, we know that our strike poses unneeded challenges. We are committed to ensuring that essential services continue to be delivered. That said, after the union's announcements, many of the PSAC's members are away from their job on strike. It is not business as usual. This means that numerous services will not no longer be provided or delayed. And the colleagues who are here with me today will give you some examples of the services affected. We will continue to inform about these repercussions for as long as they last. Meantime, I would like to reassure Canadians that federal services that protect the safety of the public will continue to be ensured. To Canada.ca slash labor disruptions to find out more about potential impacts on their services. And I want to say it again. We have made and continue to make every effort to reach a deal as soon as possible. We call on the PSEC to work with us to reach an agreement as quickly as possible. Public servants deserve no less. Canadians deserve no less. Les fonctionnaires ne méritent... Public servants deserve no less. The Canadian citizens deserve no less. I would now like to give uh, the floor to Minister Boutillier so that she can explain uh, the position of CRA. Thank you very much, Mona. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you today. I would like to underscore that our government values the important role played by the employees of Canada Revenue Agency everywhere in the country, giving services to Canadians, and especially the crucial role they paid during the pandemic. And you know, the members of the Public Service Alliance of Canada have exercised their right to strike and have given their union a mandate. This since last April 14th. Last night, the uh, members of the Union of Taxation Employees decided to exercise their strike mandate as of today, much as uh, solutions continue to be sought at the bargaining table. We recognize the fundamental right to strike. Now, the CRA and, uh, will continue, of course, to play its important role on behalf of government. And I'm thinking here of the young families that are relying on the uh, ch child benefits. And this is why the government had put into place uh, robust uh, measures to continue to help Canadian businesses in regard to any repercussions 
resulting from a strike. I want to ensure everyone that as to the child benefit, these payments will continue to be made. As to the other benefits, these will be classified by order of priority. As to the taxation season, we're well aware that many have not yet submitted their tax return to the CRA, and the May 1st deadline will not change. The CRA will continue to accept returns, and those sent electronically will be uh, processed automatically by the system without any additional delay. As to businesses, same thing. The treatment of T2s will be done automatically when they are sent electronically. Nonetheless, everything that re requires physical handling paper forms, for instance. This may take more time. Same for call centers. There will be additional delays before you are able to speak to an agent. More information on real-time wait times will be made available on Canada.ca and continue to be updated on a regular basis as the situation evolves. If any other any circumstances uh, prevent a citizen or business to uh, take care of their tax responsibilities, uh, there could be uh, s s some redress in terms of penalties, and these requests shall need to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. I invite everyone to consult the agency's website for further detail. Lastly, I would like to point out that the agency continues to be in solution mode and is determined to sign an agreement that is fair for employees and reasonable for taxpayers, and this as soon as possible. I call on everyone to remain close to the bargaining table because that is where the best agreements can be reached. Thank you all, and now I'll give the floor to my colleague, Minister Gould, who will give more information on Canada services. Thank you, Minister Boutillier. I'd like to take some time to give an update on how the ongoing public service labour disruption will affect services delivered by ESDC and Service Canada. When a labour disruption takes place, it is incumbent upon the government to take the steps necessary to ensure Canadians can still access essential services. Pendant cette période, le gouvernement During this period, the government will make every effort to serve Canadians as quickly and as efficiently as possible, taking into account the reduction in resources and staff. Only those services deemed essential will be provided, and these are defined in the Act and stems from negotiations with the Union. The Canada Pension Plan, OAS, and employment insurance, as well as granting social insurance numbers, are deemed to be essential services. Income supplement, employment insurance, and social insurance numbers are considered essential services. As these programs will be focused on maintaining client access to payments, Canadians should register for direct deposit to help get the payments they are entitled to quickly and easily. In-person and virtual services will be limited to clients requiring assistance with CPP, OAS and EI, as well as the GIS and the issuance of SIN. However, during job actions, Canadians should expect delays. One of the key services that is not deemed to be totally essential is the passport service. The majority of Canadians will therefore not be able to apply for nor renew a passport. Pursuant to the Act, the delivery of passports is essential and a priority only in situations of urgency or humanitarian uh, need. And these services will only be offered in passport offices or Canada services uh, locations. Canadians will not be able to apply for or renew a passport. By law, passport services are essential and a priority only in emergency or humanitarian situations. These very limited services will only be available at passport offices or at Service Canada centres that are consolidated passport offices. Humanitarian and or emergency situations are defined as follows. Passport clients at risk of financial hardship, 
passport clients who rely on travel as a source of employment and whose income security will be jeopardized without access, passport clients who must travel for medical reasons or who have had a death or illness in the family and whose situation is deemed urgent, and passport clients deemed urgent on compassionate grounds. Les demandes de passeport. The requests for passports that do not meet this criteria will not be deemed essential and will not be processed. Do not meet these criteria will not be considered essential and will not be pro uh, processed. We do expect that a prolonged labour disruption would create a backlog of passport applications that would need to be processed once the disruption is over. Thanks to the capacity that we've built over the past year, we're in a much stronger position to address any new backlogs, but it wouldn't go away overnight. To paint a quick picture, we currently have a sustainable file inventory of about 160,000 10 or 20 day passport applications. We receive a total of about eight. Okay, getting a sense of the federal reaction is 155,000 PSAC workers are now on strike.